button. And I am really excited about this discussion today because it's a topic that I think many of us wrestle with is what do we do with our stuff? And uh, I'm really charged up because we've got a couple of entrepreneurs on today that have come up with a solution on what we can do with our stuff. But, um, and we're going to learn about that solution. But I think this is going to be a great discussion topic on um, what do we do with our stuff? What does our stuff mean to us? All that. So I'm excited to welcome to the stage our um, panel members today uh, with the company Artifacts. And uh, we've got Jennifer Hammer, Heather Nickerson, and Ellen Goodwin. And uh, welcome, y'all. And uh, as, it, as we usually do, before we dive into this topic, let's um, get to know you all a little bit better, and then we can learn about artifacts and uh, and get into this uh, this topic. So, Jennifer, I've known you for years, and in fact, uh, it's you and Matt Paxton, who many of you may know as the host of the TV show Hoarders and Legacy List from uh, uh, with Matt Paxton. Uh, the two of you introduced me to artifacts. And uh, so let's start with you for folks that may not know you. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, no, nice to see you, Steve. And I'm just really grateful to be back on here. I love this program. I just really appreciate what you do for this entire community that serves older adults. So, um, and I am really excited about uh, the upcoming discussion with artifacts because I um, came from kind of a, you know, military wife background for a long time. So lots of moving stuff across the country to new places um, and fell into, like you said, with Matt, um, doing a lot of hoarding cleanups and then just realizing it's not just hoarding cleanups. Everybody needs help organizing and dealing with their stuff. Um, whether it's your parents' stuff, your stuff, your kids' stuff, there's just stuff everywhere. And it has meaning. And and the meaning behind the stuff is what really um, kind of sometimes par paralyzes us, right? And we'll talk about that. But um, yeah, and Matt introduced me to Ellen and Heather, and I just knew instantly um, that this um, was a pair of people who were not only smart, but they're they're caring and they love what they do. And then I saw what they built, and I just basically you know, bank to work for them, I think, because <laughs> I just, this platform is so incredibly easy to use, but so useful on so many levels. It's just, it's a head and heart platform. So love it. Great. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, let's, do, I'm going to go around the little Brady Bunch square here. So we got Heather. Uh, Heather, tell us a little bit about you and then I'll, we'll meet Ellen and then we'll kick this discussion off. Great. Thanks so much, Steve. Thanks for hosting us today. We're super excited to be here and talk about all things stuff. So by way of background, um, Heather Nickerson, um, co-founder and CEO of Artifacts. I was born and raised Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, I started my career at the Central Intelligence Agency. I spent nearly 10 years being an analyst, traveling overseas, collecting a lot of stuff and a lot of stories. Um, from there, I uh, left and spent 10 years building a private security company, um, really focusing on helping individuals and families protect their privacy. And I even authored a book on how to shield your privacy. Um, during that time, my mother passed away and I was left with a lot of stuff, which led me into the whole concept of what do we do with it and how do we make it from, you know, what could be a burden to a joy. And that was what led me to reach out to Ellen and have us launch artifacts in the middle of COVID. Nothing like building a company during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it, actually, it's a pretty good thing to build a company in the pandemic because we you could really focus on the programming and all that aspect. And it's great that now that our doors have opened a lot. But uh, Ellen, let's get to know you a little bit better. 
Hi there, everybody. Uh, since Heather started with Cape Cod, I'll start with Wisconsin born and raised and went through North Carolina for graduate school at Duke and then DC. Heather and I actually met working as intelligence analysts at the CIA. We went through training together and in later years when we were in the private sectors, we traveled with our daughters. We each have one daughter and I didn't take the privacy security route, but I did work in data and technology, which is kind of the hats that I hear, wear here at Artifacts as well. Well, we all wear lots of hats, uh, but I do focus on our product and working with our engineering team. So if you don't like it, let me know. <laughs> I'll solve the problem. I'm always shocked when people can say that they worked for the CIA. I thought you guys all made up, uh, you know, uh, oh, I, uh, you know, State Department or whatever. Um, but uh, anyways, what what interesting backgrounds. And, and before we um, dive into the uh, discussion, um, let me share my screen because in preparing preparing for this discussion, I wanted to give this uh, app a try. And so um, this is the website here and uh, I am dropping this into chat as well. So you all can give it a shot if you'd like. And in fact, if you use the, uh, if the um, promo code pro aging you can get a 10 percent discount if you um if you do a paid subscription but uh what you'll see at artifacts is you know um some really cool content and everything like that but once you create an account and you can create a free account um up in the right hand corner you'll have your little icon and you can click my artifacts and um then these are my artifacts that I started loading in. And let me kind of tell the story about this is, is that what I did was I went downstairs to my basement and I just kind of looked through the many boxes of stuff that basically have not seen the light of day in years. And one of the things that caught my attention was this cast from a broken arm that I had when I was um, in the ninth grade in high school, and I have not been able to get rid of this. I've seen it a few times, but the memories that I have associated with this cast um, are, are very important to me. I mean, um, I love skateboarding. I have signatures on it, but it's absolutely useless. You're not going to stick this on a shelf to let anybody see it. It's just going to stay in a box. I was like, you know, this is a great thing. And if I take a picture of it, if I write a story, I'm going to throw it away and it is gone. It's no longer in my house. I'm done with it. And uh, so that was one thing. And then I figured, let me do, let me use this app for a variety of things. The next thing that I, I chose was the rotary dial phone that my grandparents had. And I will never get rid of this thing. Um, it's, you know, it's a great ornamental thing in your house. It's a conversation piece. And I've got a lot of memories with that. But the interesting thing that happened was I have never really flipped it over. I thought this was something from the 1960s. It was actually 1983. And then I started doing a little bit of research on when rotary dial phones were sort of, um, when push button became popular. And that was that was kind of a fun little experience. And then the last thing that I loaded up was, um, uh, and this is, so this is, my, my grandfather was an entomologist and um, he's got lots of um, degrees and certificates and we've got them in boxes. We can't hang them on our walls. We can't do anything with them. And so, I was sort of like, these need to be just photographed, recorded, cherished for generations to come. And so that's what I did. And so those can be eliminated. Those can go away. Um, and, you know, it's not all about downsizing, but I, but that's sort of how I started playing around with this app. I can see a lot of different applications, but it was very therapeutic and uh, very helpful for me. And, um, and it's very easy to use. I commend you on your design. Uh, it is really good. So, um, so anyways, let's turn this over to you all um, and to our audience. Folks, 
jump in and um, uh, and ask questions, share your stories about your stuff like I just did. Um, and uh, but but let's learn about this app. So um, first off, the two of you got together and you figured out that, hey, there could be something here. Uh, tell us how this this happened. Sure. Thank you, Steve. And thanks for sharing your examples. Like those really resonate. Um, I will say personally, having gone through a downsizing event this past summer, um, there's no way we could have done it without artifacts. Um, my husband had like truckloads of stuff that just didn't have a space in the current space. So we had to deal with that. Um, but anyways, how we, how we started. So I mentioned my mother had passed away. It was six years ago. And as the eldest and only girl, um, my brothers kind of looked at me and was like, yep, over to you. What do you do with all this stuff? And she had, of course, her estate plan perfectly in order like that, the legal part of it, the financial part of it, that was all taken care of. But when you think about it, you have thousands and thousands of objects in a house and none of us knew, you know, the stories or the histories behind, you know, some of the, the older items or even some of the things that she kept near and dear. We just didn't know. We never thought to ask her like, hey, mom, what's the story? Um, her death was very unexpected and she was very young. So we just never took the time to do that. So I was, you know, left going through a house full of stuff, trying to figure out like, what do I keep? Um, what do I pass down to my daughter? What do I donate? What do I sell? It was very easy to figure out like, oh, this item has financial value, you know, painting, art, um, jewelry, china, crystal. That's really easy to see right away. Oh, it's important. There's financial value. But what my siblings and I really wanted was the heart's value. We wanted to know what would our mother had wanted us to keep to tell her story. And there is no way of knowing, you know, um, I give the example often of, you know, this crystal vase. She had this crystal vase in her bedroom. She never used it. It was beautiful. It was a Tiffany's vase. And, you know, the question was, did she never use it? Cause she loved it so much. And she was so scared of breaking it. Or, you know, did Aunt Mildred give it to her and she couldn't stand Aunt Mildred if we kept this vase and passed it down, she'd be horrified. So it was one of those things where it sounds silly, but I was literally on the closet floor in tears being like, what do I do? Do I keep it? Do I let it go? Like, I really wish, you know, there was some way to know this. And that was the genesis of Artifact, like why, why we started. Because, you know, if I thought through it, if I'm going through this, there's got to be others out there who have the same exact problem. You know, we our stuff lasts way longer than we do. Um, and if you don't connect the story with the item, how do you know? So that's when I reached out to Ellen and said, hey, Ellen, I've got this really crazy idea. <laughs> what do you think? And then from there, um, thanks to Ellen's technology background and really understanding of the product, artifacts became more than just a sentimental piece to becoming a very functional, everything from insurance to estate planning, um, even helping you decide what do you want to do with this in the future? So Ellen, feel free to jump in and add your part of it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that you you I I um as I've shared uh my post, I did I did a social media post on this and I was really uh amazed at some of the comments that I got. And you know, Heather, you talked about doing a downsizing event and you couldn't have done it without artifacts. What some of the comments were related to, I did a downsizing event and we just got rid of everything and we have no memories. And so I think traditionally, this is something that we don't think about. We think that, okay, the only way that I can preserve um, the, the big 12 foot armoire is by moving it to my next place or yeah. my grandmother's Hummel collection. It's got to mm -hmm. go with me. Like we don't think that taking yeah. pictures, recording it is an option and then we just do it. And uh, so I, 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 I got a lot of regret in those posts. Um, well, that's an excellent point, Steve. So in our own personal downsizing, my husband had this armoire, beautiful, at least eight, if not nine foot tall, um, like gorgeous, a solid, I think it was oak or maple. It had been in his family for several generations, but it also, it needed a little bit of TLC. And there is, there is physically no place to put it as we moved. 
And what he did is he artifacted it. He got, he worked with his mother and one of his great aunts and got the story behind the piece. And then he ended up on Facebook um, marketplace, giving it away to free to like a new home. But then he also gave them the artifact. And we now have this beautiful email relationship with this. It went to a, a young family who was starting out and, and needed storage space, but they loved that they got the history with the object. And it was really neat to see how, and again, it's not, it didn't stay in the family, but the story got passed like down to someone else, um, which is really, it was a really cool thing to see. And again, it was a huge help in letting us let go of some of that stuff that you can accumulate over decades and decades of living in, you know, in a space. I, I love it. Um, and, and also in that, that post, somebody was talking about insurance is, is that, like we're, you know, I'm sort of thinking about these items in terms of memories and what I want to get rid of. But um, so many times we have valuable items in our homes that mm -hmm. need to be documented for proper insurance coverage. And we're just taking the pictures and sending them to an insurance company. There's no story behind it. There's These are the most treasured items we have with basically no documentation for future generations to know how important it, uh, it is. And so I can see where the app is can be helpful in that regard. Um, and uh, this might also be a good time to just, because you've got this community of people that are using it, like what are some of the creative ways that folks have been using artifacts? Yeah, so so I, I'll go ahead and I'm going to share my screen if you all don't mind, because I, I want to jump on some of those themes that we saw that you're mentioning. And let's see if we can do this. Um, all right, here we go. So to your point and to the questions that we saw, when we were building this, there was the logic of we wanted it to be as simple as people are accustomed to with social media, right? Except it's turned topsy-turvy. There are not ads, politics, comments, emojis, and everything here is private by default. But we wanted to make sure that if you made that decision, take 30 seconds to think, why on earth do I have this thing? What does it mean to me? You'd be rewarded with a lot of different possibilities for what that artifact can do for you. And so here I'm giving an example that's a personal one from my collection, which is a ring. I don't have heirlooms in my family of this nature. And when I was traveling in Brazil, I tell this silly story here um, about being in Brazil and buying this ring for my daughter one day. And what I did is I recorded the story, uh, all silly pieces included, but you can also hear, see that I have documents attached. I just took a photo of the warranty of the appraisal report and attached it directly to the artifact so that someday when she gets this ring, let's say she thinks it's ugly or she just doesn't want it, whatever it is, um, she could then sell it because she has this documentation much more easily. Likewise, she could insure it more easily. You can download this artifact and pop it right over to your insurance agent and say, please put this into my policy. And we provide very easy single click access to get the documentation you need because what are they gonna ask? Do you have photographic proof? Do you have supporting documentation? And yes, 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 you've got it. And so that's where we wanted to make that simple action have lots of rewards. And this is a great example of that. But let's say you didn't. What we're trying to do here and which is a big theme for us in 2023 as we go into year two of artifacts is how do we make it simpler to make the most of your artifacts? Our first integration here, what's it worth? If I had no idea, I suspected this heirloom is worth something, I'm not sure. You can, for free, ask Heritage, Heritage Auctions out of Dallas, Texas, for evaluation. Evaluation is not used for insurance and estate and tax purposes. It's a general sense, like, we're really glad you love this ring because it's $5. And <laughs> you know, at the end, um, we're really glad you love this ring because it's worth $5,000. You won the lottery. Like, what do you want to do now that you know that? Now that you know it, do you want to keep it? Do you want to get rid of it? Um, if you're going to give it, bequeath it to somebody, there might be tax implications, but it's just giving you a free data point. And when you get this valuation, Heritage Auctions will attach it directly to your artifact. You don't lose it in email. It doesn't go floating in some drive somewhere. It will be here in your documents attached, ready and waiting if you need it. But this is the philosophy that we're approaching it with. And I think that that's really, really important where we reduce the barriers as much as possible to transform stuff from that burden into something valuable. And it's throughout the platform too. I want to highlight like why this is so important to us. Here, if I create a new artifact, 
You don't have to tell a story. We heard so much from people. We don't want a story burden. If my child gives me one more journal with questions that I'm supposed to fill in, I quit, right? Great. Don't tell a story. Just say my mom gave it to me. The end. You don't have to, you don't have to have a story. And that's why we say five words, 500, a thousand. It's totally up to you. Just record it. Give someone that roadmap. These were the five things that are most important to me. And I'll haunt you if you get rid of them. Like, you know, give people that insight of what really mattered to you. And you can always edit it and go back, right? You can have video, audio, photos. And that's that's our favorite is bringing all of that together. But we really want you to consider what do you want to become of this thing in the future? And, and that's something that we're going to remind you of and make you consider so that, again, it doesn't become a burden. It becomes that source of connection while you're alive, hopefully, and joy and future you know, financial value, even potentially. Yeah. And uh, you anticipated one of the questions that oh, came good. <laughs> from uh, Ron, Ron, who says, I understand the platform preserving an image of an artifact, yet not everybody feels that they have the capability of writing a blurb about the object or only has a vague recollection of the artifact's history. What do you think? And uh, yeah. yeah, Ron, I think that that's great. And and the other thing that I might mention is, uh, and, and you can talk about this too, is, is that you can make items private and you can make items public. And my thought is, um, let's say in Ron's situation, he's not writing a blurb because he doesn't know what the heck this item is. Potentially, he could make that public. And maybe the headline is, does anybody know what this is? And uh, in an effort to get rid of it or just to do um, some research on it all the time, right? So they are private by default, but again, you can share it and there's a number of ways to do it. If I click share, because this artifact's public, I can post it into Facebook, for example, and I did. This is a ring that we found buried in a box of report cards that belonged to my father that he, he got from his dad. And in the bottom of the box was this ring. No one knew it existed. It says Korea, it says 1951, and there's a bird and that's all we knew. So when I artifacted it, I popped it out into Facebook and I shared it with a Korean War veterans group. And I asked, does anybody know anything about a ring like this? That And I had two people actually from Seoul reach out to me privately to give me their thoughts. And, and we do see family members doing this a lot as well. And it's, it's actually something that became so big so that we built a new feature, which is I can actually create circles, invite only circles. So I can say, hey, you 20 people are my family members and I'm going to contribute artifacts like a chat group, right? Instead of chatting, we're sharing artifacts and I can let them edit them if I want to as well. And I can say, where on earth did this family China come from? Who did it belong to? I'm too young to remember. And I, you know, I can give my uncle or whoever can have edit access, the whole group if I want. And I can say, please fill in more details and they can pop it open and they can add more to the story. And so it does become a means of collaboration, but also bringing back family heirlooms together. I didn't know my grandfather. People can create artifacts and tell me stories that I would never otherwise know. You know, I can send them this picture of be like, I don't have a clue who these children are. They're really cute. But like, look, someone pasted it into a scrapbook. Oh, and I don't know who these kids are. Like, please save me. And I can ask these kinds of questions. Great. And um, the uh, Arlene says, I never heard about this before. I have lots of stories and memories from my childhood. I try to share with my son when we get together. What's the promo code? And just say, so, um, Arlene and everybody knows, the promo code is pro-aging to get you a 10% discount if you pay. But what I recommend is do what I did. Start out with a free account, load up five images, and just take your time and play around with it. And then if you decide that, hey, I'm, I want to do 40 more, then uh, use the promo code and, and get the the discount on the subscription. Um, but yeah, it was really important for us, Steve, just to jump in. It was really important for us when we built artifacts to make sure there was a way for essentially anyone anywhere to have the ability to capture, preserve, and share those histories, the stories, you know, all those cherished moments behind their stuff. We never wanted anyone to be in the situation I was with my mother, like staring at a house full of stuff, being like, what is this? 
So, and then we, we also were very proud graduates of the AARP Innovation Labs and working with them, it was very important too, were to make sure this is access to the aging population writ large. And we know that sometimes cost can be a burden. So that's, again, it's, it is literally completely free, no strings attached to give it a try. And that's right. one of our core, um, to this day, core cornerstones. I love it. And, uh, and that sort of ties in with Bob's uh, question. And he says, how do you help people who are not tech savvy access this? And Bob, what I will tell you is, is that the fact that you've logged in to this Zoom webinar, uh, I, I've used this app and um, uh, it's, yes, there's some navigation, but it's similar to navigating a, a Zoom meeting. So in your case, I think you'd have no problems trying this out. However, uh, for Ellen and Heather, I could see where if if somebody is intimidating, intimidated by technology and and they wanted they want to go through this process, they want to record it. This could be a great uh, father and son, uh, grandchild and grandfather um, thing. And I could also see as your community gets bigger where you may have sort of artifact ambassadors in, in, in regions that could walk people through these things. Yes, to all the above, Steve. So one of our earliest um, members was a grandmother and granddaughter duo. And the grandmom was in her 80s. She you know, could Zoom, could Facebook, but she was a little hesitant to try something new. And the granddaughter was like, let's do this. And they spent, um, she was off on college break, the granddaughter was, they spent the summer artifacting together. So grandmom now has over 150 artifacts. She had, we got, we asked for feedbacks. So we saw this like early activity and really wanted to know like, how was this working? And, you know, listening to them, they both had tears. The grandmom, because she was like, there's no one in my family that knows me better than my granddaughter right now. And she not only knows me, she knows my story. She knows all of these pieces and she knows what this means to me. And the granddaughter was like, I can't believe my grandmother was so awesome. She, you know, traveled to over 40 countries and she lived overseas and she went on safari and all these things that no one had ever stopped to ask, like, hey, you know, grandma, I'm like, what is this? By doing so, unlocked all of these stories from her life. And it was just such a rewarding experience for both. Um, and it was really, it was really special to hear that because that's, that's the type of connection you want. You want people to be able to connect around these stories, around these objects. You know, even in our own family, my my husband. Um, always joked with his mom about having this hideous pink vase. And we were at dinner one night and they were joking. He's like, yeah, mom, when, when you go, that's the first thing going to goodwill. And she, in her very polite Southern accent was like, now, dear, I don't think you want that to go to goodwill because that was given to your father and I from the King of Bhutan. And it was one of those moments where you're just like, no one ever stopped to ask about the vase before, but holy smokes, like, how did you meet the King of Bhutan? <laughs> Tell us that story. And yes, maybe that vase isn't going into goodwill anymore. So it's stuff like that when you take the time to stop and ask the questions and to share those stories and having that intergenerational, you know, kind of bond or duo artifacting together is a great way to do that. I love it. Um, okay, um, let's see, Bob, another follow-up question. Bob, you've got the gold star for today uh, because of these great questions. He says, do you have a checklist on how to prep for this to cut down on time because it looks time intensive with many years of accumulation? And Bob, here's what, and, and again, folks, we're spotlighting this app, but let's make this a discussion on all things, accumulation, memories, what have you. And and Bob, my advice to you is, um, I'm, and I'm going to drop this into chat for everybody is, um, familiarize yourself with professional organizers, senior move managers, and I'll, I'll put some links in chat because, yeah, you know, going through and doing it, doing it yourself, whether it be with artifacts or Google Photos, can be labor intensive. And sometimes just having a coach, somebody that can be there with you to either do it all or to help you get it started is great. And like I said, professional organizers, senior move managers, and I imagine that these professions are using this, this app as well, right? Yes, that's 100% right, Steve. So we are very proud partners of the National Association of Senior Move Managers. 
the National Association of um, Professional Organizers and several others. Um, we find that they love the ability to help their clients release the emotional components that are, that are, they're keeping the stuff because of the emotion, the story, the memory attached to it. So it really helps them help their clients declutter, to downsize, um, and just really deal with all of their stuff. The other big thing about, um, I saw there was a question about the checklist too. We have an entire on our site, I don't know if you're able to pull it up quickly. We have an ability where you can download different checklists for different themes. So we know that it may seem overwhelming at first dealing with a house full, full of stuff, but we try to make it really simple for you to just take it one object at a time. And I'd say to Steve's point too, you know, if you don't, if you choose not to use artifacts, that's okay. At least, you know, take the photo, write down a story somewhere, um, make sure your loved ones know what matters most to you. Like that's really, that's our broader mission is ensuring that you pass down stories and stuff and not just the stuff. Yeah, no, I, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm scrambling to get these uh, uh, other associations in here. Um, okay. Uh, and Bob, he says, I often hear kids say they don't want my stuff, this may be a solution. Do you have the ambassador program guidelines? So uh, yeah, and that that's the point. You know, the funny thing is, the, the, I mean, this is a tongue in cheek joke. It's just that, you know, you got that relative who's always talking about the war, okay? And then the family's eyes roll and it's like, oh, he's talking about it again, okay? Meanwhile, there are hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people that would love to listen to stories about the war that are not related to this person. And it's the same with this too, is, is that these items that your kids might not want, as you talked about donating that armoire to a family that really wants it, um, yeah, that's one of the cool things about recording this on a platform like this. Now, um, let's see, Michelle has a, a really good question it, it, or comment related to apps in general. And she says, I've experienced signing up for a service on a platform, then getting notification of needing to migrate my membership to a new platform. Given that changes in technology and changes in operating systems, what are the plans to ensure that stored items don't become obsolete or unnecessary due to tech changes. And and Michelle, it's funny because before this discussion, I, I actually had a bunch of things that I scanned into, uh, that I had a bunch of photos scanned by Memories at Mac Paxton. And I'm going to put that in, in chat. And I wanted to load those up onto artifacts. I can't find them now. So it's not only you know, the apps changing, but it's us remembering where the heck I put this stuff. Um, and, um, uh, but, but for you all, you're a new business and none of us have a crystal ball. Someday this might be sold to another business and yeah, you might have to migrate, but I imagine you've really thought about this for your members and in the future. Absolutely. And actually it starts at these artifacts are yours. Um, and that's really important to us because, for example, a lot of ancestry sites, they actually own your data. Um, and, and a lot of other sites make it hard to take things back out. Um, they don't want you to leave, <laughs> frankly. Um, I showed you earlier that you can export it to Excel, to CSV, to PDF, or you can zip it and take it all right back down. There's even that zip option on your entire artifacts collection. I can zip and take the whole thing right back down if I ever wanted to. And this was really important to how we built it. Now, the way that technology evolves, yes, no crystal ball. However, the way it normally evolves is stepwise. <laughs> uh, so for example, during our building process is when Apple went whole in on the a file format .heic. And as a result, we added that into our acceptable file formats, but we didn't get rid of other file formats. We just upgraded to include this new format. And that's something that is, is kind of natural part of the evolution in digital. No one can promise. And there are sites that promise forever kind of storage and whatever, and that makes me very nervous. Um, so I, I do take that with caution. I think in most cases it's well-intended, but there are no crystal balls. So um, I would say that, and you know, even recently with the, at home, uh, we talk with a lot with photo managers. And I did kind of send them a note, like, did you see that a popular uh, photo book site has updated their terms? 
they are not intended to be photo storage sites. They are intended to be upload them and build and purchase products from us. So their new policy is if you don't buy from us within 18 months, every 18 months, then we're going to, you're going to lose your files. Ooh. And that's because people were using it, not how they hoped or intended. Right. So I would just encourage no matter what you're using, how are you using it according to its intent and its policies and making sure that you're in sync with them or just write them and ask the question. I've had a lot of very point blank questions from folks and, and a company should answer those transparently. Great. And, and actually, I want to give a shout out to the folks that are watching on LinkedIn. And this is uh, related to this. Uh, Tari says she's curious about, and you touched on this a bit, but privacy law implication as a potential Canadian user, can we access all the same features in other countries and then assigning legacy contacts to continue the account after the original account owner dies? Man, uh, thanks Tyree and all you on LinkedIn there. What a great, I, I would have never have thought about that. Yes, and we actually have a lot of Canadian users, so hi there. Um, and yes, so that, that's that's not an issue, and we're actually evolving into so we've got a lot of momentum as well in Europe, um, you know, in GDPR and being cognizant of that. It, we do have the advantage of not collecting PII information. We don't even store the credit card information. It's vaulted with our payment processor. In full disclosure, that makes it a lot easier on us um, in terms of all of that. And as in terms of legacy context, absolutely. And actually, before we even launched, uh, we were working with a researcher that had tried to transform Facebook's policies on this. And he does research into online identity and mortality. And we showed him, you have legacy contacts in artifacts. You can nominate a primary and a secondary. And by doing so, they will have that that permission from you to come to artifacts and say, hey, I would like to transfer these artifacts to this account. And if they do that, then we'll put a black banner to memorialize them when we have the proof of death certificate, and they'll be locked from editing so that they are preserved in the form that they were when, when the person uh, passed away who owned them. And so we took care of that from, from square one. And uh, we agreed these, again, these are your artifacts. If you took a moment to artifact them, they were important and they're yours. Yeah, uh, great, great move with the um, the downloadable zip of all the uploads because um, so many of us have been held captive by a. Uh, yes, we I, have, and I don't yeah, like it. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> not fun. Um, let's see. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, my good friend Jill Sachs, who I haven't seen in a long time, she says, "Can this be compatible with ancest ancestry dot com so that the artifacts can be attached?" to relatives on the family tree. Jill, great minds think alike. That's what I was thinking the first time I uh, started playing around with it. Any possibility that this could link to genealogy sites? Yes, yeah, so the long, the short answer is absolutely yes. Um, we would one day love to have an integration with Ancestry, seeing that they're the, the giant and we're still a startup that may be a little way down the path. However, we have a lot of genealogists who love using artifacts for that very reason. You still have, you know, great grandma's China, although great grandma may not be here. And what they've been doing, our genealogists, when they create the artifacts, they'll use, Ellen showed you earlier when she shared the screen, there's a field called location. It's totally optional. Um, some folks are very literal, will know it's in the front hall closet, or it's at this address, or wherever it happens to be. Our genealogists who use artifacts love putting in the actual um, URL to the ancestry, like their, that link on the family tree, or if they have it in a different binder, if they've done an oral history, or they've written a whole, you know, some families write entire books about their family history, and they put them in, you know, they store them in Google or whatever, they can link right in that current location. They can put that link in so that you know this artifact belongs to this person in this part of the family tree. So right now that seems to be a very simple workaround for genealogists who are artifacting the physical items while still doing the genealogy research um, on ancestry or other uh, family research sites. I love it. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the Somebody asked about the AARP group and that you that was ARP Innovation Labs. Look look the group up, folks. If you want to see some really innovative thinking on different things for older adults and and really some exciting entrepreneurial ventures. 
Um, and uh, my gosh, we've got a lot of stuff here. Um, let's see, a cousin in California spent two years delving into our family history in Russia. We have this 500 page book of our family history, but there are some pictures, but mostly writing. And, um, and there's nothing the matter with that. That's impressive. But you could see where potentially a companion piece could be created to work with that, that book. Um, it's a really, Steve, that I, I love how all our worlds keep colliding at artifacts, folks. You can't make this up. So yesterday <laughs> I met with an author who, like you, his family has four books that are going to be his original source material. And then his mom's like, well, I also have boxes of stuff. Do you want that? He's like, yes. Yes, please. Uh, so he got all these boxes of stuff. He's writing a book about their family's World War II history and sharing, he has all of these artifacts and all these photos and all these, you know, medals and patches. Like you, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff he has. And he came to us because he's like, look, I can't put it on the book. My publisher's gonna say like, you get 30 images, the end. And not everyone wants to read the book. Um, you know, some people are just kind of lazy these days and they <laughs> prefer different formats. So he will be artifacting things from the book and creating a separate experience for folks where they can access those as well. And I think that even with some of our families, there was a Canadian family, they're about to have their 120th family reunion. The reason they came to us is they, they've twice published that book, that black and white, who came from where and when and who's related. But the problem they're finding is engaging that next generation to pick up the mantle and take it forward. And no one's visiting the, the place where they have original artifacts stored for the family. And so how do they get the next generation going? The digital format is something that they want to bring it to life, um, where they can also have people's audio and video included with the artifact to tell that whole story. Great. Um, and let's see, Marianne says, I donate artwork and other valuable items to nonprofit benefit auctions and having documentation helps them for item descriptions and getting higher winning bids. And to that end, I mean, Marianne's got a resource for making a donation or what have you. Is, is, it an, is there an integration or do you have plans to sort of say, like if somebody did the drop down menu, I'd like to donate this then connecting them with donation sites. Yeah, we, <laughs> again, so recently we were at a conference and we met with um, philanthropic organizations that do this um, as part of their work. And so that they, we talked to them right before we released that in the future feature. And what we're looking at is twofold. One is we can always populate uh, organizations that others have used before. So for example, if my cause is the American Heart Association, you would see that in the dropdown and be able to select it like, oh, that's a great idea. In the future, organizations like the American Heart Association could be notified with your permission, always with your permission, this person is interested in making a donation here's their information they've given for you to connect with them. We are looking at doing that just to save you figuring out who on earth do I contact, you know, what are the requirements, et cetera, because again, we want to make that stuff handling as simple as possible. So we're in, having those discussions. Wow. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, this is great. Okay. So Linda Beer says, what does one do with slides? And, and, and you young folks out there don't remember the little slides and you go to somebody's house and you'd watch this little slideshow. Okay. That's back in the olden days. That's what we did. But the, um, then I scrolled down and Carolyn Pennington, who quite is from the Shepherd Center. If you all aren't familiar with the Shepherd Center, they're awesome. Um, she found this large screen slide and negative converter on Hamaker Slemmer. And, um, uh, I'm glad that you shared this, uh, Carolyn, because I was about to send boxes and boxes of slides to um, uh, Memories by Matt Paxton, but this seems like it might be a really ideal solution here. So, uh, so thanks for sharing that. But do you all have any um, thoughts on what we do with with slides? 
Yes, so we have, we've built around artifacts, an entire community of partners, we call them allies and stuff, that help our members essentially preserve, um, you know, get a hold of all of their things. Um, Ellen popped the link into chat with one of the articles. We have a partner called Mono Curate, um, and they do a wonderful job with slides, with videos. Um, they even help restore um, old actual artifacts like baptismal gowns, wedding gowns, um, scrapbooks, photo books. But we have, we've worked really hard as we built artifacts to also build the community around us, knowing that people, if you're taking the time to artifact the item, you probably want to preserve it. Unless of course you're downsizing and letting go of it. But if you're going to keep it in the family, we want to make sure that we have the resources for you to ensure that that object can last for generations to come. And the, and the important in that, and why I put the article in the chat, know what you want out of the digitization process. This is critical. When we were reading the fine print, we were very, again, unhappy with, you know, you might get the video, but not the audio. I was like, but I want the audio on the video. Like what? I didn't know that was an option. Like read the fine print. It's really, really important. Think about what happens if it gets lost in the mail. How will you feel if it, it is lost in the mail? Um, these, these are things that are, you know, you can't reverse time. So I would just say, again, with any product, no eyes going in, what eyes open going in, what do you want out of that process? Um, okay, great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carolyn says, my dad spent years creating family genealogy before there was internet. Um, man, remember those days before 1995. Um, I, <laughs> I, I now have 10 boxes of pages and stories of ancestors' lives and stories, but what to do with them? Obviously not throw them out, but this is overwhelming. Any suggestions, not only from you all, but folks, let's help Carolyn out. Uh, if you've got ideas, uh, let her know. Our standard recommendation is, is scanning them and, and having a PDF uh, version that you know where it is and you tell others where it is, <laughs> um, or you artifact it and attach it. But like I, that, that's our standard recommendation because then it's available to whomever has the interest to go through all that. Great. Okay. A couple of little, you know, administrative things. Renee says, how can I copy these chats and save the, the links? Don't worry. All of the chat and the recording will be up on our website later this afternoon. So that will hopefully help you there. Um, somebody asked Steve, what is Memories by Matt Paxton? I will throw the link into chat again, but, but, it is a company that will scan photos, slides, and send them to you on a however you want them. And uh, because I'm friends with Matt Paxton, I use that company, but I will tell you, there are dozens of companies that can help you with this. There's, I, I think there's probably people that will come to your house too and help you sort through it and then take it. But but this is one choice that you could you could potentially use. And um, Michelle asks, any consideration of also linking to the Library of Congress for further recording and recovery of family history? If, any thoughts on that? I would say, of course, we would like, as we grow as a company, would love to have that come into fruition. Um, so we're always open to new ideas for collaboration, new ways to ensure that what you'd create at Artifacts definitely has its place, not only in your family history, but local and global history. Um, it was fascinating. I was at the National Gallery this past weekend in DC and they had an exhibit of Southern artists and they had quilters from Guy's Bend. And it struck me because it was one of those items where, you know, these quilts are well-worn, well-loved. And unless you knew the history, unless you knew the context, you could easily have tossed them if you found them in someone's basement or attic. And that was terrifying when you realize, you know, you, if you're, if you were that quilter and you were that family with that quilt, you know, if you didn't take the time to let someone know this is where the quilt is from, this is why it matters, it could just be another thing. But because of that history, that context, what is starts off as family history, very quickly becomes, you know, like world or at least, you know, regional history. There's there's that connection there. And that's, again, it's part of our, our passion is to really ensure that we don't lose pieces of history, rather if it's individual, family, local, global, you name it. So yes, we would love to collaborate with the Library of Congress someday. 
and Heather uh, was asking where the quilts were. Yeah, from. where where are the quilters from? Whoops, um, unmute. Oops, sorry about that. The National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. They had a beautiful exhibit of 12 different quilts. Oh, cool. Um, all right, I see uh, another one of my good friends, Reed Miller, who asks, is there a limit to the amount of storage? So we we know we've got a limit in our basement, and then we go out and we buy storage units when we exceed that. But if somebody loaded up a thousand photos, what would happen? You know, I mean, or is there a limit? So, so we, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ellen, this is your area. <laughs> no, so um, I, I can also share my screen, but we have a size limit per artifact because you might have a tiny audio file and a large photo or you might, you know, whatever it is. So it will tell you that. And very clearly, it'll tell you if you upload it wrong for file format, it'll tell you if the file is too large, anything like that. Because one of the things that I try to say what we're not, right? If you are looking for a photo storage solution, that's not artifacts. You're not gonna come here and upload 3000 photos. Like this is not what it's being used for. It's okay, I have a thousand photos of my daughter swimming. I have two that are actually really important and have great stories. <laughs> so those are the two I'm gonna artifact, right? So it's more again about like, what is it that you're trying to achieve and using the right platform for it? So um, we do have a hundred megabyte limit. It can be any composition of little audio, video, and photos. And then when you create, so you can see where the loophole is, I'm just telling you right now. Um, but when you create artifacts, um, the, the unlimited, the $89 a year package is unlimited number of artifacts. And, you know, someday maybe we'll change our mind, but you'd be grandfathered in, but you know, this is where we, we are is you can create unlimited artifacts under that membership. Okay, cool. And yeah, I, before we turned on the cameras and uh, open this up, I was sharing with them that I couldn't find all those photos that I uploaded to Google photos for, from the Matt Paxton thing. And what they were saying is, you know, you can put the link to all those photos in your artifacts. So maybe I pick two or three that I um, spotlight in artifacts, but then I have a link to where the 500 photos are um, because I'm not going to go through the time to write a story about all of them. Um, and Bob, again, uh, he, I see after loading up and can I download these into a book format and copy it? And Ellen says you can export right now to a PDF, but Bob, one thing that I've actually enjoyed doing with um, for my family on a couple of little projects is like um, once you've got these photos in digital format, you can use them as artifacts, but also it's really easy to like uh, the the most affordable way to do a photo book is Walgreens. It's crazy. Um, they always have a fifty percent discount, and I've done a bunch of books where we loaded up, you know, a hundred photos and created these nice hardcover books. You give them as gifts, and they're pretty cool. So um, if if you're not familiar with that, um, um, check that out. Um, okay. Um, Man, Bob, you you are really going to be getting the gold star today. Non-serious, tongue-in-cheek question: Will CIA be able to access my account, even though it will bore them? Seriously, excellent work on this great virtual immortality option. Um, yeah, and you got the two best people that created it too, because they used to work for the CIA. What what is your and a security firm. Uh, what is, you know, for people that are apprehensive about doing this stuff, what's your response to them on security? So absolutely no. Um, no one else can have access to your account unless it's a named legacy contact that you have designated as part of your account um, onboarding and account management process. We take privacy and security to be, again, one of the cornerstones of our, of our company. Um, my background, I, I spent a decade helping families maintain their privacy, helping them protect their privacy. Um, this is a non-starter for us. It's one of the reasons we don't have ads. Ads are really sneaky. They send a lot of data back out the back door and we refuse to have that happen. 
Um, we also, it's a reason we custom built this platform. We are patent pending, actually multiple patents, but we're patent pending because we didn't want to use an open source uh, platform like a WordPress or any of the others that are out there. Because again, so much of that data goes right back out the back door because that's part of how they're making their money. So we really do take privacy and security to be paramount in all that we do at Arbitax. I love it. Great, great. This is, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Robbie, Robbie says, I'm a theater artist about to create some life review shows with groups of older adults in retirement communities in the Philadelphia area. Any recommendations for technology which supports my transcribing their journal entries into Word or Google Docs? Um, the uh, uh, Robbie, this is great. And it's great for everybody on the community to uh, share with that. But uh, do you all have any resources that you like to use there? So Robbie, I'll, I'll share with you how I do something similar is if you can use Zoom as your platform. So like you could even do this live. So you could open up your Zoom account, open the computer up, hook up a camera and be talking live to somebody and use Zoom to record it, okay? Just because it's got an easy recording mechanism in it. And then when it's done, upload that. Um, I use a company called rev.com. I'll throw this into chat for anybody that needs to know. Absolutely an amazing because it will transcribe that interview within, if, if it's an hour, you'll have it done by the end of the day for a very affordable rate. Um, and then you can cut and paste that into Word or what have you. That's one solution there, but uh, feel free to reach out and email any of us on the stage and hopefully we'll uh, find a solution for you. But Rob, Robbie, I also want to have you on one of our discussions, okay? Just so you know, that sounds really awesome to me and it's something that we want to get the word out. So let's have you on to talk more about your project. And um and I'm looking at the camera, we're, I'm looking at the clock, we're getting close to the top of the hour, but let's keep on going through some of these comments and questions, and uh, you guys can hang on. Remember, folks, it's uh, recorded, so if you have to jump off, uh, you could jump back on and see what you missed. Um, lots of congratulations on uh, what you all are doing. Uh, Barbara Sullivan from the Village to Village Network, I'm in the process of going through mountains of eight millimeter videos of my father's do you have a process to download videos once I get them converted to a thumb drive? Um, can can she put a video on artifacts? Yep, as long as it's within that 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 hundred um, limit and. We do have tips in our FAQs. The FAQs are downloadable to PDF as well. Um, they're searchable, but we do have tips specifically on video audio because usually every computer these days it has um, software pre-installed if you open it up. If it's too big, what I do is I take a trim and I trim it down to the part that I really care most about. And then I use the location field for the URL, the web address where I've stored the, the larger whole file if I ever want it again. Great. Um, Lynn asks, uh, often technology gets updated and unsupported. Uh, how are you handling this eventual possibility? Well, I think there's two ways of looking at that, right? So for example, you will see some you know, Internet Explorer sunsets itself. <laughs> and then we don't support it anymore because it's going to be removed from laptops and computers. And in, you know, even if you're in an unsupported browser because it's been upgraded, there's a banner that will pop up that says you need to update your browser, uh, that kind of thing. Now, within the scope of our product, we're going to continuously update. We test against 12 different screen sizes and 15 different browsers. And the reason is we're trying to optimize to make sure the best possible experience across the mayhem of all of that. Great, great. Yeah. And that's one of the beauties of the new world where we don't have native applications on our computer anymore. It's all done behind the scenes. And so the next time you might go to Artifacts, you might notice something looks a little bit different because they're updating it. And all you got to worry about is getting to the web address. Um, uh, Jill asks, I apologize if I missed this, but can I designate a person to inherit ownership of my account. 
Absolutely, yes. You can have a primary and a secondary contact. And when you add them, they'll get a notification that you've nominated them and they'll know what to do. Great. Um, and, you know, folks, we could probably do an hour discussion on this is, is that I think about this all the time. I have so many different um, applications and logins from Netflix to, you know, Facebook to whatever. And it's just coming up with a, a system to make sure that other people know how to get access, that you trust, get access to your account. It's it's very much in line with advanced care planning and, and you know, just telling people what our wishes are. It's sort of like, how do you get access to all this stuff? So uh, maybe we'll have a discussion on that in the we, future. We have some contacts we can introduce you to. When we unveil our allies of stuff, we're listing a number of platforms in there. We haven't necessarily, we're not picking a, a horse, but there's so many, whether it's trustworthy or good trust platforms that do just that all of your accounts, all of your passwords for your family to have access to in the event that you would pass away. Great. And um, let's see, Carolyn Grafton says uh, that she's scanning thousands of genealogy stuff. Uh, any any um, resources that you might recommend for scanning? Yep. And I actually popped into chat there. Okay, you know, good, good, with, good. You can start okay. with local libraries and there's a number of resources. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and, uh, let's see the, uh, okay, we're getting through here. Um, uh, come on. Um, let me just make sure. It, the, okay. Uh, it, uh, yes. Okay. I think we, I think we basically got through everything. I can't believe it. And it's just a little bit past one. So first off, Thank you uh, for this discussion. It was a lot of fun, okay? And again, thanks to our audience, folks. Yeah, these folks on the stage are the stars of the show, but you're really the stars of the show because the questions that you ask are things that I would have never thought of and probably um, the three of us have never thought of. And, and one of the things, because yesterday's discussion was so engaging, we talked about intergenerational playgroups and this one was too. One of the things that I'm thinking about for next month is a little experiment where we just let's talk about, you know, things and just sort of creating sort of a forum where we can all just come together and just have a chat on specific subjects. And so if that's something that you might have some thoughts on or a topic that you want to talk about, um, shoot me an email because um, I'm going to play around with this concept uh, because I think we could sit here and just talk, each of us just share, you know, our stuff and the challenges that we're faced with and share resources like how I shared Walgreens and, you know, and Carolyn Shell that shared the Hamakler Slammer thing. Um, I think it could be really helpful, but we could be doing these on various topics like memory care and things like that too. Um, so, um, uh, anyways, um, any sort of closing thoughts before we, uh, we say goodbye? You guys Just want to say thank you so much, Steve. We really appreciate you having us on the show today. And we really appreciate the questions. It's been great. We love knowing what's on your minds. It helps us to always make artifacts easier and better for all of your use cases. So thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts with us. Great. Uh, all right. I'll echo that. And I want to uh, let people know too, that we often will through our newsletter, let you know when we're doing kind of happy hours uh, virtually, and we do a lot of story sharing and things like that. So we'll make sure that you are posted on doing chats like these with us as well. Excellent. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, have a great day. And uh, thanks again. Thanks, Steve.